So I know how to do an integrated iterated integral over an interval. This is great, but many domains in R2 are not intervals. On the real number line, intervals were basically enough for any integration. Even a domain that was broken into pieces could be expressed as a number of intervals, and the integral could be done in these pieces. Intervals were all that was needed for domains of integration. For functions of two or more variables, intervals are not at all sufficient. Just in R2 alone, I can imagine many other domains. The domain of integration could be a circle, an oval, a much more complicated region. Over such a region, the graph of a piecewise continuous function still defines a volume, so there should be an integral to calculate it. How does that work? As with much of mathematics, there is a formal solution as well as a calculation algorithm. This video introduces the formal solution. Even though this course doesn't get into the fine details of proving all the rules of integration, I want to show you enough of that formal solution to give you appreciation for that perspective in mathematics. So what is the formal solution here? Well, it's something called a characteristic function. Let S be a subset of Rn, any subset at all. Every subset defines a characteristic function written chi sub S. This is a function which returns one for any point in the set and zero for any other point. It's actually pretty simple, but often a long ways, a long ways outside of how you may have been taught to think about functions. Characteristic functions are functions for sure, but they're a bit different from trig exponentials, polynomials, etc. They're all discontinuous. They can be radically discontinuous for strange sets S. They serve the purpose to identify a set, which is di a different kind of purpose than most functions you've seen so far. So how do characteristic functions solve the problem? Well, say I have a set S in Rn, and I want to use that set as a domain for integration. All I know how to do so far is to integrate over intervals. However, by choosing a large enough interval, possibly with infinite bounds using the improper integrals from the previous video, any set can be put into an interval. I choose some interval i such that s is a subset of i. Then I integrate over the interval i, but I integrate the characteristic function. Since the characteristic function is zero outside of s, this removes any points outside of s from the integral. When this integral exists, the set S is called an integrable set. Not all subsets in Rn can be used as domains for integration, only sets for which this integral is defined. Formally, going back to the Riemann definition of the definite integral. However, the sets which are not integrable are not really of concern for us in this class. To be not integrable, the set has to be a pretty strange beast. Ordinary sets like circles, spheres, other ordinary shapes, these are all going to be integral. So, as mathematically interesting as non-integrable sets are, I'm really not going to pay them much mind. So now say that S is an integrable set, and say I want to integrate the function f with domain S. How do I do this? Well, I want to do the same thing as I just did. I put S inside an interval, and I integrate over the whole interval and I multiply by the characteristic function, therefore removing all points from outside S, setting all of that volume equal to zero, essentially. However, there is one technicality. The function f may not be defined on the whole interval. How do I manage this? Well, I extend the function f to some new function f tilde. f tilde is any extension of f which is still an integrable function, Again, in formal mathematics, there are some strange functions for which such extensions may be impossible, but for the ordinary continuous or piecewise continuous functions that this course cares about, this extension is always possible. Then I integrate f tilde over i, multiplying by the characteristic function to effectively limit the integral to the set s. This is the formal solution to integrating over a general set. You might wonder why this is all necessary, so let me recap. I don't have a general method of defining an integral. To extend the Riemann definition, I need to use intervals. The whole setup of sums and partitions in the Riemann definition only makes sense for intervals, 
for rectangular boxes that can be nicely divided into subsections. Then I get a definition over intervals. To define the integral over arbitrary sets, I need to relate it back to this definition over intervals. The characteristic function is the tool that makes this possible. This machinery is necessary to have a solid definition. And this definition is important for mathematical foundations. To prove the properties of the multidimensional integral, to know that it does what we expect it to do, that it is reliable. I'm going to move on to calculations soon and ignore these formalities. But they are completely important to the foundation of all that I'm developing in this course. I have one other small observation to make before I finish this video, which gets back to the topology I started last week. What sets are integrable? A very nice fact is that all open sets are integrable. In fact, open sets will be the archetypical foundation for integration, and one of the reasons that I needed that topology. Even more, if I have any set S, the set S superscript 0 is the set of all interior points of S. S0 is always an open set, so it can always be used as a domain for integration. If S is an integrable set, if I integrate any function f over S, I can actually switch to the integral over this S0. The boundary points don't contribute to the integral at all. And this is a really convenient little fact. It lets me ignore a bunch of complications about what happens on boundaries, about integrating over two sets which share a boundary, about breaking up integrals into smaller pieces. I'll show in the next couple of videos how convenient this little idea really is.